We greet you again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. We most certainly appreciate your presence here in the Northside Baptist Church today. This is Preacher Edward speaking for the benefit of you out in the radio listening audience. We appreciate you tuning in out there, getting this hour coming up. I believe it will be a real inspiration to you. And the message will be on tape number 295. If you'd like to have this morning's program on cassette tape, it's tape number 295. I'm speaking on the subject, Children Given and Why. Children Given and Why They're Given. Tape number 295, turn to Psalms 128, 128, the reading of God's Word. Now, I have a list of more than 290 tape listed. Tape of all type messages on prophecy, heaven, hell, Holy Spirit, and many other great themes and doctrines in the Bible, signs of time. And you can get these tape. If you write in and get a list, we'll send you a list of them. You can write in and get the tape for $3 each. And the gift is used to help take care of our radio expense. You pray for me and write to me next week because we depend upon your support to keep this program on the air day after day. We just completed last Monday uh, 39 years of daily broadcasting from Athens. We're now in our 40th year, and I hope this will be one of our most grateful and successful years in getting out the gospel by medium of radio. Now, my mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. 30603 is the zip code number. You can get the tape today by number, which is 295, by title, which is Children Given and Why, Psalms 128. I want to give you time to turn there. If you're not getting the daily broadcast, tune in each day at 12 o'clock noon and get the daily broadcast, and it'll be a blessing to you. A lot of people tell me around noontime each day, they're eating their lunch and listening to the broadcast, getting spiritual food as they take in their physical food. So I hope you'll do likewise. Reminded the dear man, you know, every time he had company, uh, he'd show them around in the house. He'd say, this is my refrigerator. This is my stove. And this is my bedroom suit. And his wife kept telling him, why don't you say this is our furniture? This is our refrigerator. This is our living room suit. But he just kept on saying, this is my table. And this is my so-and-so. She got enough of it. She reached over and grabbed the frying pan, whopped him upside the head, knocked him cold. They carried him to the hospital, revived him, and when they revived him, his wife is standing by his bedside. He said, honey, if you'll hand me our pants up there, we'll go home. So sometimes it takes a frying pan, you know, to kind of straighten things out. But uh, I'm not recommending you use it. Maybe and straighten it out some other way. Psalms 126. A little boy started to school. Asked him his name. He said, my name is Fertilizer. Oh, your name is Fertilizer, yes. Why the name you Fertilizer, son? He said, well, my daddy's name Ferd and my mama's name Eliza, so they named me Fertilizer. Well, it's always good, I guess, to kindly uh, add your parents' names and to yours on how it come out. That's the way that came out in fertilizer. All right, Psalms 128, verse 1. Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord and that walketh in his ways. For thou shalt eat the labor of thine hands. Happy shall I be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sides of thine house. Thy children like olive plants around about thy table. Behold, thou shalt be the man to be blessed that feareth the Lord. And the Lord shall bless thee out of Zion. Thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. Yea, thou shalt see thy children's children and peace upon Israel. Now there's a promise there. God said if you're right, you can see your grandchildren someday. Well, that's found in verse 6, the promise. And then in verse 1, fear the Lord, do right, live to see your grandchildren. That's wonderful. Now that's reading Psalms 128. I'm going to speak on the subject, children given and why. Somebody said everybody ought to have at least three and a half dozen children. That is three girls and a half a dozen boys. 
That'd only be nine, wouldn't it? Well, in olden times, they uh, had large families, and you don't see many real large families in many homes today. And But uh, God blessed large families in olden days. Uh, the day I heard on the news was a woman gave birth to a 30-second child. That's something unusual. Uh, usually 20 is the limit. But that's not the greatest. That's not the woman that gave birth to the most children in the world that we have a record of. The record is 55. A woman in Chile years ago gave birth to 55 children. That's very unusual. That's a world record. But anyway, the Bible tells us here that God will bless you, bless your children, promise you you see your grandchildren. Now, the barrenness of our churches should burden the souls of Christians. Look with me at some women that were barren and have grieved at their soul until they did something about it. What these women did about their natural barrenness, we as Christians should do likewise about our spiritual barrenness. I'm going to mention these women and their natural barrenness had no children and what they did about it and God gave them children. Now I want you to apply that to your spiritual life because what we need today is spiritual children. Every person that you win to God is your child in the Lord. How many children do you have? How many people have you won to God? God wants us to have spiritual babies born in our churches. And today we're in somewhat of a dryness in many of our churches. I know we're living in the Laodicea and state of the church age. Back yonder in the early church century when God walked among the candlesticks, it was different. Now he's on the outside knocking, trying to get in. But God wants us to still have spiritual children in our churches, people being saved. When a person is born again, he becomes a baby in Christ. I don't care about his age. When he's saved, he just becomes a baby in Christ. The moment he's saved. And some of these women in Old Testament days got stirred up because they had no children. And what I want you to see today is from the message is how we need to get stirred up when we're not seeing people saved when babies are not being born spiritually in our churches. The first one I want to mention is Sarah. Sarah had a son of promise. God promised Sarah and Abraham that they would have a son. And they waited for that son. And Sarah became very anxious for that son. So anxious until she ran ahead of God. But she wanted that son that God had promised. She became so disturbed about it until one day she said to her husband, We are not going to have any children. I'm 90 years old and you're 100 years old. We're just too old to have children. We're not going to have any children, Abe. And if we have any, you better go ahead and marry this maid here in the home, Ismael, that you brought out, or rather Hagar, you brought out of Egypt. Go ahead and take her to be your wife and have a child by her because I'm 90 years old and I'm not, I'm not expecting to have children at my age. But God had promised. When God promises something, he never goes back on that promise. God waits his own good time to fulfill it, and that's what he did here. So Abraham listened to his wife, Sarah, went ahead and took um, Hagar, and then God gave a son that named him Ishmael. Now when Ishmael came on the scene, it wasn't long after that until Sarah realized that she was going to have that son that God promised. And she did have that son. His name was Isaac. And then there in the tent, they just raised the devil. They couldn't get along. Ishmael and Isaac couldn't get along. Sarah and uh, and uh, Hagar couldn't get along just to fuss, almost drove old man uh, Abraham up the wall, and he had to try to straighten out the mess and, and get them all settled down and try to get them to live together and do right, but it just didn't work out. They ran ahead of God and got into trouble, and then Abraham had to carry Ishmael and Hagar out in the wilderness and turn them loose and let them go in their direction. But anyway, that son came in due time. In Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 and 2, And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had promised. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time which God has spoken to him. So when God promises, he'll fulfill. Don't run ahead of God. 
Wait on the Lord. Now look at the promise God gives concerning those that are lost. He says in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, He's not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And we can claim these promises in Psalm 126 and verse 6. If we go forth weeping and so in precious seed, we doubtless come again rejoicing and bringing our sheaves with us. God promises us spiritual children. And you can have spiritual children, but you're going to have to do something about it. You're going to have to get out and, and win them to God, witness to them, get them to Jesus, and they become your spiritual children. A lot of people are not concerned about that. You have people concerned about uh, physical children coming in their home. They'd like to see children born in the family. Many people do. Many of them don't want children. But many of them do want children and deeply concerned about it. But God's people should be deeply concerned about spiritual children. Instead of being upset about physical children many times, get concerned about spiritual children. How many children do you have in the Lord? How many people have you won to God? Every soul you win to God is your child in the Lord. You need to keep that in mind and be concerned about it. Now we come to number two, and that's Rachel. Rachel had a son of travail. Poor old Rachel, she was so upset because she bare Jacob no children. She was greatly disturbed about it. In Genesis chapter 30 and verse 1, And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or I'm going to die. She went to her husband and she said, now, Jacob, we got to have some children. I'm going to die. And Jacob said, who do you think I am? Do you think I'm God? We'll have to look to God to give us children. And she kept worrying Jacob and fussing about it and travailing about it and in anguish about it and weeping about it and praying about it. And on and on she went calling on God until one day God came to her rescue. The Bible says in verse 22 of Genesis 30, And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened her and opened a womb. See, she became overly anxious about it. She travailed about it. She was disturbed about it. She said, I want to bear a child to my husband. His other wife has borne him more than one child. I haven't borne him a child. I want to I bear him a child. It was, it was dishonorable in those days. And shameful for a woman not to be able to bear children. And she wanted to bear a child for her husband. In verse 23, and she conceived and bare a son and said, The Lord hath taken away my reproach. She was living in reproach because of no child for her husband that loved her dearly. And now she said, I have a child and God's taken away my reproach. Now travail and labor involves painful effort, no doubt about that. She no doubt spent many sleepless nights, toiled and rolled and couldn't sleep and cried and, and begged God, maybe unbeknownst to her husband. She said, oh God, I, I, want, a, I want a child. I, I'm, I'm afraid if you don't give me a child that my husband will eventually despise me. And she cried to God. I believe when we really get down to business and travail and pray and agonize with God and weep, over sinners will eventually reach some. I believe that with all of my heart. God said we would in the Bible. If we really get, get down to get in earnest and get down to business with God about our lost loved ones, I believe we can reach more of them for God. The trouble is not with the gospel. It's not with God. The trouble is not with that sinner out there. It's with us. We need to get in travail and concern about that lost man out there. In Galatians chapter 4 and verse 19, the Bible said, my little children, of whom I travail in birth again until Christ be formed in you. The apostle Paul, agonizing with God like a woman in travail to bear a child, agonized with God until Christ was formed in those people. And he is disturbed about it. Every day he prayed and he cried and he asked God to give children, give the church children. And then he wanted to take care of those babies when they were born in the family of God. But Rachel had to travail and she travailed and gave birth to one of the greatest men ever lived. His name was Joseph. Joseph and Daniel are the only two outstanding characters in the Bible that you have no sin recorded against apart from Jesus. And they were good men. Joseph was a good man. And went through many trials and greatly used of God. 
But we find his mother Rachel had to pray and agonize. And then she didn't stop there. She said, Lord, give me another child. And she kept on crying to God until one day God uh, let her conceive and she bare another son. His name was Benjamin. But when she's given birth to Benjamin, she died. That's the first woman in the Bible that you find died giving birth to a child. It's Rachel. The tomb is between uh, Jerusalem and uh, Bethlehem. I've seen it many times. Some of you ought to plan to go with us to the Holy Land on our next tour. You in the radio listen audience, write in and get a brochure. Some of you here ought to be concerned about going and get a brochure and plan to go with us. You can see Rachel's tomb. Those women there in Israel, you know what they do when they're expecting a child? When they're expecting that child, they pay Rachel's tomb a visit because she died giving childbirth. And they feel like if they'd pay her tomb a visit, that that child would be born healthy and they would not have to give their life to bring a child into the world. And those Israelite women do that. They visit the tomb of Rachel when they're expecting a child. And they go there, of course, at least one time for that purpose. But she travailed, and God gave her another son, Benjamin, and she died giving birth to him. And her husband, Jacob, buried her beside the road that leads from Bethlehem, that leads from Jerusalem down to Bethlehem. We come to the next one, and that's Hannah. Now, Hannah had a son of tears. Hannah was a weeping woman. She prayed and she cried to God to give her a son. And God gave her a son. I was reading the other day uh, in some uh, a little magazine or maybe a erotic or something. I was reading about this dear lady. The doctor warned her, she and her husband, not to have any children. Said, you, you, your wife can't have children. If she, if she has a child, she'll die. But they wanted a child and they prayed to God and, and she conceived. And they prayed all the time she was carrying the child. And when it was born, it was born in perfect health. And her, her body was not harmed whatsoever at all. She came through it um, in good health and how they were rejoicing and praising God. See, a lot of times we look to man and look to ourselves to take care of situations like that when we fail to honor God. God can take care of many situations that man can't handle them. Now Hannah prayed and cried to God in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept so. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look on the face of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Hannah said, Lord, just give me a son. I, I want a man child. I, I want a boy. Give me a son, God. If you'll give me a son, I'll give him back to you all the days of his life. She stayed on her knees in prayer to the extent until she wouldn't get off her knees. And she prayed and cried until the prophet thought she was drunk. But she wasn't. She was praying for that child. She wanted a child. And finally God heard a prayer. and God came to her rescue. And God gave her a son and named him Samuel. As he carried little Samuel to the house of God and placed him in the house of God there under the supervision of Eli, the high priest. And he grew up in the house of God. And she'd take him clothes and various other things down in the house of God. Because she's doing what she promised. She said, I give him back to you, Lord. Just give me that son. The Bible says in Psalms 126, verse 5, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. She wept and she wept until she conceived and she prayed until she gave birth. And then she rejoiced that that man-child was born to her. And Samuel, the name Samuel means, um, I prayed for thee, or it pertaining to prayer. And so that, that Samuel was born, became a mighty prophet in Israel. But his mother prayed and wept and shed tears until God answered her and gave her that boy. In Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 1, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes a fountain of tears that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughters of my people. Jeremiah said, Would to God that I could cry day and night if it helped God's people. 
And he did. He was a weeping prophet and he had preached and cried and weeping day and night uh, for the people of Israel. In Acts chapter 20 and verse 31, the Bible says, Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn every man day and night with tears. For three long years, both day and night, the apostle Paul walked among God's people and among those sinners and warned them about missing heaven, warned them about rejecting Jesus Christ, and prayed for God's people that walk down the straight and narrow way and do that which is right. And there those tears flowed down his cheeks. And there he, um, of course, uh, as he wept, he was under great burden. Thank God for tears. Thank God for people that can weep. We need more tears. I miss dear old sister Potts, who's gone on to be with her dear husband. And up there today with her husband, used to sit over here on my right and your left. And very seldom did you ever see her fail to be wiping tears during the service. She'd weep and, and tears would roll down her face as she'd hear the gospel. She's a great person, loved her pastor, loved God, loved her church, devoted to her church more than 25 years, very much devoted to her church and loved God. And I'll tell you, uh, she was a great person and God kept the record and God has the record, but she was a weeping lady. We need more people today that, that can weep and shed tears and we need more preachers that can do it, more deacons and more good women. We need old brother Amen, old sister Wedi in our church. If we had more of them, we get more done for God, no doubt about it. And so we find that, that she wept until God gave her that son. She is a weeping woman getting her answer. I want to tell you today, dear soul, you might not be able to teach, preach, or sing, or be able to give much financially, but that not a one of you good women or you men, but what couldn't shed tears and get the answer from God if you really meant business. That involves all of us. Number four, four, that was Ruth. Ruth had a son of faithfulness and steadfastness. The Bible tells us that Ruth, whenever her mother-in-law insisted that she stay in the land of Moab, dwell among the cursed islands of Moab, and stay there with her people and die with her people, she said, I'm not going to stay here. I'm going with you. And Naomi said, you stay here. She said, no, I'm going with you. And the Bible said when Naomi saw she was steadfast, not movable, and you couldn't drive her stay there, make her stay there, she let her go on with her. As a result of that, the Bible said God gave her a son, and his name was Obed. She married a rich man, a wealthy man, Boaz, a type of Jesus. God gave them a son. Back then, Bethlehem, Judah, they named him Obed. From Obed came another son by the name of David. From David came the Lord Jesus Christ through his descendants. You see what Ruth did when she was steadfast? The Bible says in Ruth chapter 1 verse 18, when she saw she was steadfast in mind to go with her, she left speaking to her. And she is terminated with her steadfastness, her refusal to compromise, to go back or stay in the land of idolatry. Brought about this great blessing upon her. And she went back to Bethlehem, Judah, the land of God. And there married a great man, Boaz, a wealthy man. God gave her son, Obed. And God blessed her tremendously. Why? Because she is steadfast. Now we can get the answer. We can get souls to God many times if we don't faint. She was steadfast in her decision. She is steadfast in her labors. She is steadfast in, in reminding Boaz of his obligation. Now, I won't have time to go into that because that's a sermon within itself. But the Bible says in Ruth chapter 4 and verse 13, So Boaz took Ruth, she was his wife, and when he went unto her, the Lord gave her a conception and she bare a son. The son came because of her steadfastness. She refused to take no for an answer. We should be steadfast in our desire for souls. Don't give up on your loved ones. Those are lost. Don't give up on them. I have loved ones I've been praying for ever since I've been saved more than 45 years ago. Don't give up on your loved ones. Keep praying for them. Maybe God will eventually bring them through even after you're dead and gone. God may answer those prayers. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9, Let us not be weary in well-doing. In due season we'll reap if we faint not. A lot of people just before they get the answer, 
They reap. I mean, they faint and they fail to reap. Now, don't faint. The answer is coming just around the corner. Hold on. If you faint, you'll miss it. And the Bible said, you shall reap if you faint not. We move to number five, and that's a Shunammite woman. He had a son of, who had a son of kindness and helpfulness. Because of her kindness and because of her helpfulness, she had her son. That's an old bald-headed prophet. Go up and down the road by her house every day, down to the school of the prophets, old Elisha. And he'd go back to where his uh, place of abode and then go down to the school of the prophets every day. He'd pass her house and she and her husband see the old man of God going down the road. She said to her husband, I believe he's a good godly man of God. Let's invite him to come in and eat a bite as he passes by. We know it's a long journey from whence he came and where he goeth. And we'll just fix him a little table on Put him a lamp on that table so he can study the word of God. And we'll give him some food to eat, a little bed for him to sleep on. And that'll break his journey. And so he did that. They invited him in. And that thrilled the old prophet of God. You can't do too much for God's anointed. God will bless your house for it. And that he did. Uh, did to this house. And, and he came in. The old prophet of God came in. He would eat with them and go upstairs to his little bed and sleep and had his candle there and his table where he could study the word of God and that would break the journey and he'd go on his way. One day he said to the, the lady of the house and maybe her husband, you've been so good to me. I'd like to do something for you, something special you'd like to have. She said, yes, the preacher, we'd like to have a child. We don't have any children and we'd like to have a child. Would you pray that God will give us a child? The old prophet said, you'll get it. You'll get that child. And he asked God, he said, God, give them a child. And sure enough, there was a little son born in that home because they were good to the old prophet of God. They took care of his need and God blessed him with that little child. He was born in that home. This came because of kindness and helpfulness. You can be kind and helpful and reach far more people than you can cussing them out and beating them over the head and trying to drive them in. Now, the Bible says love never fails. You can reach people for God through love. You can't reach any other way. Yeah. I had a brother one time, bless his heart, he's gone on now, and I tried to drive him to God, and I threatened him, and I say, you're going to hell if you don't get saved. You're living like the devil, and you need to get right with God, and, and uh, you don't need to be doing what you're doing. And I tried that and tried it. It wasn't working. It just kept driving me away. One day I put my arm around him. I said to him, I called him by name. I said, I want you to know I love you. I love you and, and I, I want to see you saved. He began to weep and there he accepted the Lord, made a profession of faith in the Lord. That was done through love. I tried to drive him, I couldn't, but so I, through love I managed to lead him to a profession of faith in the Lord at that time. He'd come back to the Lord. He might have been saved earlier, but we reached him through love. And so that's what happened here. Then number six, you find Elizabeth had a son of prayer. Elizabeth and Zacharias prayed. They said, we'd like to have a son. We don't have a son. We would like to have a son. In Luke chapter 1, verse 13, But the angel said unto her, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard. Thy wife Elizabeth shall bear a son. Thou shalt call his name John. God said, I'm not only going to give you a son, I'm going to tell you what to name him. They prayed for that son. And thou shalt have a son, and thou shalt have gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. And so they prayed, and God gave them old John the Baptist. He was a pretty good one, wasn't he? John the Baptist was born to Elizabeth and Zacharias in answer to prayer. See, you never know what God may do for you. If you mean business, get down to business with God. Now I know the church will have sons of joy when children are born again. You read Luke chapter 15, uh, and you see there there's great rejoicing in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. Every time you win a sinner to God, there's great rejoicing in heaven. We need to be concerned about children, spiritual children. Many years ago, Dr. Gardner tells a story. A man came into his father's business. His father was a Christian gentleman, and a friend of this man, he noticed the man is very sad. Notice he'd been weeping, his eyes swollen. And Dr. Gardner said, his father said, uh, uh, can I have a talk with you? He said, yes, you may. And they went into the office and he said, I notice you're burdened. He said, I'm, I'm just torn to pieces. 
And uh, he said, well, what's your trouble? You know, I've been your friend over the years. He said, well, let me tell you. He said, me and my wife had no children. We prayed to God, and finally we, she conceived. And we went to the heart. We couldn't wait. Every day for nine months, we rejoiced. We just couldn't wait. And uh, finally the time came. We went to the hospital. And so uh, the child is born. It's a little boy. Oh, he said, we was three of them. But he said, the doctor came. He had a sad look on his face. He said, I hate to tell you that you can't take the little thing home. It's all deformed. It's, it's affected with Mongolianism. And there you can't, uh, you can't take it home. And it never lived. And it's all deformed. And it's head all out of shape. He said, me and my wife wept. And we said, we prayed for this boy. And we're going to take him home. He said, well... You may take him home, but he can't bring you any joy, really. But he said, we want him. They carried the little fellow home. He never knew anything. And uh, as he grew up, they had to hold him in time to keep him from destroying things. When he got up in his late teens, his daddy slept with him every night because he's so destructive. Many times he woke up, he said, and that boy would have a chair up over his head, fixing to hit his daddy with it. Or uh, something he picked up out of the room of the house to try to destroy his daddy. He said he became so violent until he just tore up a funny tour. He said we loved him. We warned him. We, we just wanted him so bad and we loved him. He, he never one time called his mother, mama, or me, daddy. But said we loved him. But said the time came whenever we couldn't handle him any longer. We had to carry him away to an institution. He said, uh, Dr. Gardner, Said that broke my heart. Said we went down to the institution and said I carried that boy in. Said we went down and signed him in and went to the corridor where they opened the steel gates to let him down to go put him in the ward where he couldn't destroy himself. He said they opened those cold steel bars. They put my boy on the inside. Said he walked as straight down that corridor as any man. All I could see was the back of his head. So I stood there and wept, knew maybe we'd never be in our home again. But he said, Dr. Gardner, I'm going to tell you something. He said, if that boy had turned around and said, Daddy, I love you, he said, I'd have took my bare hands, I'd have tore those steel doors and gates off of that uh, hospital wall, and I'd have carried my boy home and kept him the rest of his days. He said, not one time they ever call me Daddy. Not one time they ever say he loved me. But said my heart's broken, Dr. Gardner. It's broken. My boy's down in that cold institution when I here remain the rest of his days. But you know God's grace is sufficient. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we come to you today. We thank you for every blessing. We thank you, our Father, that we can pray for our spiritual children. We pray, our God, that you'll be with us and help us and God, give us souls. Lord, there's so few being saved today. and we like to hear the cry of a newborn babe in the family of God. Bless thy people, Father. Have you in this invitation? Use the message for Jesus' sake. In his name I pray. Amen. Debbie's playing for us. Now listen to me while she plays. If you're here unsaved, backslidden on God, you have a problem or you need to come to this altar. You want to join this church. Would you come while she plays a stanza? So while we wait, would you come? speak and you obey the Lord. I've given you the message that God laid on my heart. It's up to you now to respond to it. <laughs> 